All right, this podcast was uh, night two at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. Second to last night before the end of my tour in D.C., Fat Mike, who I didn't... I honestly forgot about Fat Mike because so many people showed up at that gig that... By the time Fat Mike was the only guy I I was looking forward to seeing in San Francisco, but every fucking person in the world showed up to the point where when I walked in, I had no idea it was him. Here's a guy in a fucking uh, full leather uh, kilt, (laughs) black kilt and spangles and fucking (laughs) he's got chaley hair and he's like, hey, and he's like, "I, I, I. I was confused, and he goes, Fat Mike. I went, oh, fuck. So confused with the other people. You hugged him. I know. And and, and went back, and I'm all, Fat Mike. (laughs) And you went, oh, hey. (laughs) You'd already given him, like, a welcome to the green room, getting ready to to go on the show and and everything like that. fucking Sam. I I understand. Fucking Sasquatch. Sam Sasquatch shows up. And he had already said he's coming with his drummer friend from a band. Yeah. So I assume this <laughs> fucking weird guy in a mohawk and a leather kilt that's 50 years old is the drummer friend. So I just hugged him because he's a friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> that was Fat Mike. And here's our podcast, slightly edited. <laughs> you are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. All right, are we ready to roll? All right, you're rolling? We're rolling. Everything's live? Yeah. We're rolling, we're live. Go pee. You want to shut the... That's, yeah, no, no, I, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Hey, this is the Doug Stano podcast. No one's paying attention to it. We just wrapped up uh, uh, our second show at Cobbs in San Francisco. Uh, I had fun. I don't know if they did, but... It's uh, San Francisco is one of those many cities that I like to shit on because it's not as cool as they think it is, even though it's a great city. It's a fantastic city. But sometimes you have to tell them it's not as great as they make it out to be. So I probably shit on the crowd way too much for the last two nights. But we have a special guest. We have a lot of special guests that are talking in the background. Don't know that we're actually recording, but it's going to be that kind of podcast. Brett Erickson's here. Morgan Murphy's here. She did not appear on the stage. She's, I don't know, are you high as shit or drunk as shit or both? Because you have... I was, uh, I, I was wishing that you were taking my place for a lot of that. She did her act up here. I was m- missing a lot of uh, beats, but there's a lot of new beats to be had. And finally... We get to do this live. The meeting of the minds... Fat Mike, who I fell in love with when I read his book, No FX, Hepatitis Bathtub, and other stories. Other stories, mostly. One of the one of the best, because I, I I like to when I was writing books, I was reading comics biographies, and they're not. I like to see not Mark a lot one. of backstage shit. That no, goes they don't. On. They don't tell the dirt. Yeah, so I had to go to. I don't listen to music much. I certainly don't listen to punk rock. What uh, do you I'm leaving. L- label it. <laughs> do you have a label for your type of? Yeah, well, I have, I have my own label. Is it called punk rock? Like, yeah, my label is called punk rock music. Because no, it's, it's called like, Fat Records. There's, there's death metal and thrash metal. And no, no, punk rock someone. is good music. It's good, but I don't know the difference. No, this is what I, I, I try to explain. Emo from fucking trance. Or I try to explain this, or I go, no, Doug is punk rock without knowing. Or, or liking punk rock music, you you're a very do it yourself. I mean the whole the when you're on we stage were, tonight, exactly. I was like, that's me, the that's me. But he gets away with more than I do. <laughs> uh, you know, because I get away with a lot. People are like, how could you say that on stage? You should be able to get away with anything because no one can understand the lyrics. Uh, no, I'm talking about between songs, guy. I, but I say so much right. shit, and it, how can you say that? How can you talk shit about the band that's playing right next to you? <laughs> like, st- oh, you know, yeah. tell that band to fuck off because they believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> it, and because uh, that's a weird thing. It's kind of I learned from you before I ever met you. A weird thing. Comics are generally uh, supportive 
of each other. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd go to concerts and the opening act would get fucking booed off stage. If well, you were seeing Journey or something, right? I, you I, I you weren't going to punk rock shows. No, no. Well, no, you get booed off stage as a headliner in a punk rock show. We came to see <laughs> you. You get spit, spit on your face. Yeah, yes. And you get bottles thrown at your head. Yeah. But, you know, that's where you make the money. But uh, there's a lot more of antagonism with musicians, probably because there's a lot more of them. I don't know. You all draw dick N pictures in green rooms. No, poorly. no. Uh, punk rock bands are supportive of each other. Metal uh, bands aren't. Like we went, I snuck into Sl Slayer's backstage room and stole some snacks from them. And Carrie King got so mad. Like, the show's over. I'm stealing some chips. Get out of our fucking room. Slayer snacks. Who cares? Slayer snacks. <laughs> Slayer snacks. Uh, plus, you, you have to count on so many more people. Like, I know Erickson is going to be solid. If I'm fucked, no matter how fucked Erickson is, I know he's going to be solid. I don't have to watch. You have to follow. Oh, uh, they fucking threw a bass guitar through a fucking amp because they were pissed off about the <laughs> snacks. You know, I'm going to take you to your first punk show and you'll realize that it's not like that. You're thinking of The Who. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you heard of that band? Yeah, well, we're, we were talking today. Like, If they're going to pull all of these outed, celebrity, famous, powerful people, oh, we're going to... Take Harvey Feinstein's name out of the Hall of Fame of Producers. Harvey Feinstein? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to... But the point is... Yes, like, and. When Jew. You, when you read... <laughs> that Jew. Oh, that, oh that's what... That <laughs> Jew. That's what they call... My, my golfing friends call me that. That Jew. When that's you coming. read his book or any of those in the day, the fucking green room stories, the shit you guys did. Yeah, but no we, did, we did something different. I mean, the opening line is, the first time I drank piss was on a balcony and... You know, I was going to start it with call me piss mail, but I thought <laughs> that I, I didn't want to go for the laugh. I want to go for reality. I think we just got the title of the podcast. <laughs> 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 call me piss mail. <laughs> That's <was> fucking brilliant. <laughs> but I, I talked about it somewhat on stage and I haven't got deep into it yet. But George Bush grabbing some fucking girl's ass in a photo op compared to this shit that bands do in green rooms, are you going to really call... Uh, we're taking all Led Zeppelin off the shelves because of that fish story. It's, di shark. it's different. when you're uh, Well, punk rock bands don't do that, by the way, which is weird. But a rock band, if you're a girl going to, to backstage and you had to suck a cock to get backstage and you're going to hang out with a band, you're not getting... Uh, Tacit agreement. Yeah. But if you are going for a job and someone uses you to get the job, then it's fucked up. So I like that they're calling everyone out. Well, but but comedians like you know, Louis C.K. He was jerking off. I, 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 and I he, and he apologized. It, I, I think he I think he can get away with it. Well, the problem is, I said this on stage last night. If Louis C.K., who says his career is over, destroyed, if he was just doing stand up comedy, he could sell out ten times the amount of shows that I sold out. Here, yeah, but his show I'm, is so genius. But I'm saying, as a comic, you're beholden to no one. D d what you said last People night was would, like you, he could sell out this room ten times over. He could bump me today the middle. as the biggest yeah. fucking evil misogynist. <laughs> in, but I'm like, I'm, I'm go, in the BDSM hey, I, scene. I'm taking your gig. <laughs> I'm in the BDSM scene. You know, like we do fucked up shit. You know, if I fucking piss on a girl and cane her, it's it's, it's not to get a job. It's because what we do, we do crazy shit. Yeah, I, you know, I, it's I, not, I jerk off to that. I used to. You jerk off to my. Yeah, you have King, my videos. King.com? You, you, com? you fuck yeah. King dot com. Yeah, I mean, I'm in so many King dot com videos. You really are. I fuck yeah, I am. Oh, you know what my, my wife. You know what my wife did to me. Immediately, my wife. To be fair, there. he's not really looking for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, my, my well, we're not the divorce papers aren't signed yet. Yeah, my, my ex, my almost ex wife, worked there. And you know what she did? She goes, ask the owner, Peter, who is the lowest of the lowest slaves here? Who is the lowest slave? And they found her. And she says, I want you to fucking beat my husband's ass. And she fucking beat my ass. Like, that's fucking. That's love. I don't know what happened. I don't know if that's love. That's I, I, just fucking cool as fuck. <laughs> I used to do a bit about. Uh, uh, well, I, I might even be in my new book. That fucking kid that killed himself. <laughs> I, I get a, a letter from a kid 
Liam Wait, which SV one? Hughes. We need to back up a little bit here. He was the kid that was about to go to j- jail, prison for seven years for looking at child porn. Oh. And he wrote me, uh, by the time you read this, I'll be dead letter. And he wasn't kidding. He's dead. And, uh, he, but he was facing seven years. And uh, in defending him versus Andy Andrist's molester, I said, first of all, he was only looking at it. And I, I say... Uh, I don't, I'm not into child porn, but there's a lot of stuff I jerk off to on the internet that I wouldn't do in real life because it would hurt a lot. <laughs> you do it in real life. I just jerk no, off no, to it's, it. No, it's, everything's essential and what, what's the age, age of consent. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point that I'll get in real, in real trouble for. But, you know, I have empathy for people who have uh, sexual desires for things that you're not allowed to. Taboo. And, yeah, yeah and you're, but it's not taboo. It's not, you're not allowed to because... It's There's wrong. No consent. <laughs> it's fucking wrong. With, as but far but as what's the age of consent? You know, 14, 15, whatever it is. What the real <laughs> Easy, point? Raymore. The real point is: Are you harming somebody? Ste- step are you it harming back somebody? a little. Yeah. Are you harming somebody? Are you exploiting somebody? Exactly. Are you hurting somebody? Is what it really comes down to, because. You know, an eighty-year-old in a in a. I mean, my dad was thirty-nine. He married a eighteen-year-old, uh, or when he, she was nineteen. I was like, Dad. That's, She's a little young, you know. You're you're you're, you're using too. this if woman. You go through your lineage. There's gonna be my first. My dad was my mother's teacher in biology. He Hot. was fucking her when she was 17, and Hot. he was 36. And it's probably the only time he ever got laid in his life was me and my brother. You want to hear something you won't believe? I said, uh, 30 years I had sex with two women. Because, and I, I'm not in the profession that that happens. But I had two wives, and they're both fucking awesome lays. So hey, what are you, you going to do? You get a bunch of bandmates here. <laughs> Not mates, but you're... No, you're, but they know a it's true. band. Yeah, Pierce, you don't get laid. He, Come on. He, that he guy doesn't get no, laid. No, I'm, I'm different than, than other people. <laughs> he gets laid He gets laid. laid. <laughs> Chuck from the Mad Caddies gets laid a lot, okay? <laughs> for, the, for the listener at home, we're talking to a fat guy in a leather kilt. <laughs> This is a man's mini skirt, Doug. I, I know. Get and it right. We're pointing to a guy off mic that looks like any kind of Dutch warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Scottish guy here? Who's looks the Scottish like Bradley guy? Cooper. Where is the Scottish guy? Because you know they say left? they say the thing where you're supposed to wear nothing under your kilt, right? Yeah. That's like the rules. Go ahead. But you can't. You're about to show something. I'll what? Why wear panties? But, oh, but, but not just because right. I feel feminine in them, but because when you shart in a kilt, you're oh. fucked. You know, there's no, there's no catcher. That's a, it that's an goes, album it goes title. Right, it ends up in your shoe. Yeah. You're fucked. If you were 29, you'd be. Hey, your Hershey that bar down. melted. Great album title. You need some kind of catcher, Shark Mitch. Kilt. You know, you know what I'm talking about. A diffuser. <laughs> you shart. How often do you shart a week? I have to. I have to interject. Brandon Walsh right here. Shart, shart. It's poop mixed with fart. These are the genes that I tore apart with a shart. Come I didn't on. mean to lose control. <laughs> Sorry, it's no, but it's not that. Like, like sometimes you're like you're like, this could be a shart, but I'm willing to take the chance right now. Gambling. Yeah, yeah. It's a gambling addict. And sometimes you're just like, oh, this is a fart. And then you're in line at a hotel waiting for your... Rit- and then it's terrible. We were... Uh, or you're on the wharf today. What? <laughs> oh, who sharted? Who sharted? <laughs> no, that was me. I don't like crepes, but I went in there because I thought they had a bathroom. Let's take a picture right now. Yeah. Hennigan plaids does this. plaids Hennigan and leather. Makes everything it's up. not video. He's so. the Scotsman. He's the yeah. one who- He's a, he's, he's, he's the one that would say guy. you're not supposed to wear panties with a, with a kilt. <laughs> it's a leather kilt, San Francisco. Mike, you know when I was 30 and you were 40, you told me when you turn 40, Chuck, remember, never trust a fart and never waste a boner. <laughs> <laughs> I know the wasting a boner part. Your friend, I have to repeat it so people listening can. You said never, he said never trust, trust a fart. A fart. And never waste a boner. And mm. I'm old enough to the, know the never waste a boner angle. That's, I don't care that's about the problem sharks. I don't get horny unless I do, you know, cocaine. Man, but then I'm you the do more way. than one or two lines, and then it's like, ugh. Well, you, it's, you're going to underperform. And that's not if, why not if you use rope. Not if you ball. use rope. <laughs> and <Viagra>. overpromise. <laughs> right. Rope. You type your shit with rope. It's Fat better Mike than Mike from NoFX. We're going to get... Rope, Cialis, or same Viagra. thing. Keeps the blood in the vicinity. Oh yeah, uh, thank you. 
Yeah, that's not good though, man. What rope? That, no, that that can cause damage. You can't you can't damage this shit down here anymore. Well, you, sh- well, you see the size of my nipples? Right, that's you. They're terrible. That's you. Uh, Doug, let me ask you this. Boner pills. Go ahead. Boner pills. Yeah, it gives you a headache. Yeah, I did that I get, for a couple uh, years. Yeah, very racy. Like, yeah, my balls have been stretched for a while. When you take a shit, you're you're we're the same age, fifty. Yeah. Do you touch water or no? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking. It's fucked up. <laughs> the balls are touching water. Yeah, and you're shitting in that water. <sighs> You're soaking in it. <laughs> you ignore that. <laughs> See, you asked if anyone had a bidet, or you asked if you had a bidet. Yeah, I don't have a bidet. Brett Erickson. I have a thing. Uh, it's a. It's like a hose next to my toilet. I do. That's what the a bidet 80, is. No, no, a bidet is. What the a fuck? A bidet hose. is. You take a shit and you have to move over to the bidet. No, 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 no. You tell me Japanese. That's ones. your dad's bidet. This yeah, yeah. is a new. No, I don't have that. Uh, new era. I have South Korea bidet where they're yeah. not fucking mongrels. Okay? No, you, well, but they you are. still are, have I think to. Are. Let no. the, you have to move your ass to the wall. No, you no, know, no. I have a thing that. Now. You know, the they, sink things? What do they have? Some kind of like scope on your ass? No, no, I'm telling you. Why don't you come down to the sink? No, you put in your sink, you know, to wash dishes. I have yep. one of those yep. up next to my toilet. And you just take it and... Yeah, but I don't have anyone close to my asshole ever, so I don't really I don't care. have someone close to my... No, you could do it yourself. I know, but the point is... <laughs> and Erickson just did a very strong bit that I've never heard you do about bidets tonight. Yes, but that's what I brought up. That would be something when I was fucking 30... I'd go, oh, I shouldn't have my asshole all stinky if I'm going to get laid after a show. But now I, I go seven, eight days without showering at all. I've been wearing the You want to talk about not showering? Oh, here. <laughs> Punk rock has me beat, I'm sure. No, no. B-A-Z. How long has it been since I showered? One month. Six months. No, no. O- over a month, yeah. Wait, over a month. He, and, but, and I don't why, smell. Why does Baz know? <laughs> but, but. What? He's French. Wait, what's He's your, French. But he, you, you know, also just got. I don't di- smell. You, you, anyone can take it. I don't smell. I but got this you weird just got divorced. Jew film. <laughs> you just got divorced too. <laughs> yesterday. Are these. Yesterday you just got divorced and did your first open mic set doing stand up. No, no, that was that was a little bit before. All right, so but you know it was so, been, it was crazy. It's been in the time since you showered. <laughs> I know. I just. Uh, it's so European. It's nice. But, no, but me. <laughs> Me and my wife were splitting up all our fucking SM stuff, our latex and you know cocks and. I, I, hang on, because I read the book. Whips. You guys had like a full dungeon situation. We, we had a slave girl. It was, girl. A, it was slave a lifestyle. Girl. It, it was a lifestyle. And 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 it's not a bad. It wasn't a really bad breakup. Just she got sober, which is weird and kind of stu- got into Buddhism, and <laughs> she took the BDSM out of Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, my I have a weird brain. But like that, the other day, I talked about singing a song about Switzerland, taking the Jew gold, and Switzerland drop six letters. It spells Nazis backwards. What the fuck thinks of that shit? <laughs> it does. But that first of all, you do have a brilliant mind in a, uh, in, in a punk rock world. A Thank positive you. Positive way. Like you have some <laughs> no. mental health issues. You have some. I, I just think I'm. More normal than everyone else. That's I, I, I understand that. That's why we're here together. <laughs> I get that. But with your book, which is so well written because it includes all the guys from No FX. So there's one chapter he tells his story, and the next chapter one of the other guys goes, "He's full of shit. I never stole anything from that lady. I don't remember it like that." So it's you're. It's all close. To, it's all close. It's a. So well written. Thank you so much. But usually, all of those books you read, they get sober at the end, and that's why they're writing a book. You come out as a fucking deviant fucking bottom in the BDSM world <laughs> that's still drinking, and that's why I could go- fucking top too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I tried drugs at thirty two, so that's my secret. Yeah, it was. That's why I knew. You, I guess you, how do, I think I tweeted about your book. That's how we met. Something like someone that. Someone told and then, someone. And we both and killed our moms. Yeah, oh, and, that's right. And I tweeted you on Mother's Day. I said, happy killed our Mother's Day. <laughs> Not tweeted you. I yeah, actually texted. Texted. Hey. I, text. I just say typing at now. And you said, yeah, is it great? We don't have to get up early. Like text. it's like Kwanzaa or something. It's funny. I, I, <laughs> it's a good reply. Yeah, and we, I, I remember I, we were drunk on a podcast, and we, we had you on speakerphone. 
or Skype, however it worked. I'm going to say text. But eventually. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know we each killed each other's mom. Yeah. No, well, that's wrong. No, no. You killed your mom, motherfucker. I killed my own mom. I take care of business. Yeah, how, t tell, tell, tell us how you killed your mom. Oh, so I can go to jail? Uh, you know, I was, I was actually pissed because I should have done Tony Soprano style. Don't worry, this style. isn't live. I should have done Tony Soprano style and, and put a pillow on her face because that would have taken five minutes. But I listened to the doctors and shot her up with all these pills and, and morphine, right. and it took like th over 30 hours of horribleness. And uh, What are you drinking? Oh, I have a, a Jamie. Oh, Jamie? Yeah. Nice. Uh, so it was horrible. It's thirty hours of just fucking. She was suffering. She was, of course, she was suffering. When why did the doctors just tell me, put a pillow on her face? What, what, was if she I was a hospice? If I was a man, I would have done that. Was it hospice situation? Well, yeah, yeah, or? yeah. And, and she asked me in front of all her friends if you could help, if I could help her. So, ma, ma, save this for private. <laughs> yeah. Save this for when you're caning me. <laughs> my one last one for the road. Uh, it kind of stuck. When she, when she found all my junk, though, when she found my canes and whips and everything, <laughs> that was good shit. You roasted Wait, your me, mom. Tell me. There's people listening to this that don't know the story. Tell me. Well, okay. You, her and her you get 80 year old woman girlfriend, I don't know, they were at my house and a TV repairman was look, watching, was trying to fix my TV. Yeah. And he pushed a button and my DVD came on of some woman tied to the ceiling getting bull whipped. Hey, hey <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. His pearl bracelet just <laughs> fell off while he was gesticulating. I, I, I think he, uh, I think he uh, ripped this off from Wilma's neck. <laughs> These are for the butt. They're just not pearls. Anyway. Whoa, what? Atel and, I, Atel and I had a very deep conversation about why do they make uh, anal beads in white? And I, right. I think we both were doing the same bit about it. It should be like black Hawaiian beads. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so you know when they're dirty. Mm. Well, they're so you know when you have to clean them. Dirty. Yeah, exactly. okay, I see. Unless you have a bidet. Call back. <laughs> Thanks. So the TV repairman pushes a button. And he's not looking, and just there's a girl getting whipped by another woman. Big screen TV, and my mom and her 80-year-old friend are just looking at it, and no one's saying anything. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't, like, jump or anything. I'm like, hey, dude, uh, can you stop you that mother, from dude? happening? <laughs> no, oh, oh, the, the TV repairman. Right. I thought you but I'm not going to calling... jump. I'm not, you know, I can deal with this. Yeah. Dude, see? see? He's like, oh. Did she die before can you, your book Can you came stop up? that? <laughs> Yeah, Looks both, like your both DVR my parents works died in 2006. <laughs> all right. Both of my parents died. They, they were talking about who's going to die first. So that's all they knew about you was that video? You weren't in no, it. No, but that's, it was kind of the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me. But then I just owned it. <laughs> once you They own didn't it, say anything. <laughs> but, but once you just, own it, and, they and now And now look at my son's closet. <laughs> Jewish people, man. But, all right, let's get back to the divorce because now... After how long were you together in your you know, BDSM lifestyle? Well, my, my, I've been lifestyle like since I was 18. But I was with a dominatrix for seven years. We were married for a year and a half. All right, because that's kind of how you came out in the book, where I was hoping you weren't going to get sober. You came out, or, yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to get you know, no. beat with fucking whatever. No, so, I'm, I'm so, so dumb with society rules. Like, like the, drugs are like, they're awesome. And uh, it, when your life becomes out of control, that's a problem. But I don't have it's that problem. It's actually an AA slogan that works for drugs. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. <laughs> Keep doing drugs. It works if you work them. You work it's not ridiculous. Up. My my therapist says, that's real. That's, you're doing great. <laughs> Are you missing meetings? Is anything in your life fucking up? No, I'm having a lot of fun. And everything's going well. He doesn't have kids. Uh, yeah, I have a daughter. You have a daughter. Yeah. Fuck. My daughter said to me uh, the other day when I was playing a show, she goes, Daddy, I know you wear dresses, but you look like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> You're that, sending the wrong message awesome is to that? young women. <laughs> no, and my stepdaughter, who was 17, bought me high heels for Father's Day. <laughs> now, that is normal. People think it's weird, but no, that's how it should be. She's like, Dad, we don't wear fucking white after Labor Day. It, they, no, no. They were white heels. They were white heels. She got me a, a purse that matched it. Right there. What size? It's really nice. I was. I, what size? 
Uh, well, and women is 11. D- uh, You're a fat chick. I'm a fat chick. <laughs> I know the dresses I wear, they have to be like baby dolls. They have to, you know, it sucks. <laughs> so you uh, want to go back to this divorce thing? Yeah, I want to get back to where you have to, after how long were you together with the... Seven years. Seven years. Best times, so best times of my life. a collection of... Latex, leather, cocks. Apparatus. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And you have to... Because that's fucking expensive. Sam Sarquar can attest to that. We did yeah. this... Uh, I have a walk-in closet full of latex. Baz, say we. We. Yeah. We. He's French. We filmed a, f- a, a failed pilot, I'll just call it. Uh, and one of the gags, we required an abundance of sex toys. And you forget, that shit's really expensive. Well, I'm Jewish, we needed, so... We needed a trunk to open up and all these sex toys fall out. <laughs> And we're on a limited budget. Yeah. We're also at a family dollar. (laughs) But, you know, you can go to any store. It's really a sex store. You know. It had to look appropriate. Yeah, anything can fit in your ass in a dollar store. (laughs) Yeah, you get lube. That's exactly right. Clothespins. You got duct tape. Carrots. Carrots. Oh, hey, these are expired. That's fine. (laughs) Not where we're using them. So, so, we're, so we're, we're splitting up our stuff. Walk me through. We're we're in in the condo splitting up our stuff. You had an amicable stuff. divorce. It's very amicable. We we had lunch after our our mediation, which is really good. But we're splitting up our stuff, and you know we're crying a little bit and it's sad. And I just said, "You want to go to a comedy club now?" My friend Dave Ross is playing, and she's like, "Okay, let's do that." Because why not? It's absurd, and my life's absurd. So how, we, how was he? Oh, he was good, but I said, Dave, can I, can I, I've never done stand up before, but can I go up and just, I oh, feel, that I, was the night yeah, going up? Yeah, I'm like, I'm feeling so awkward. I think I could do comedy. <laughs> and I went up and, and did a little thing, and it worked. Did you do the Buddhism joke? It's a fucking strong joke. No, no. No, no I'll, I'll tell you what I, told, what I said. Please. Uh, the first time I met my wife, I was at her dungeon, and her slave girl said, no one gets to go into her, her bedroom, but she wants you in her bedroom. And uh, I said, okay. And, she put on David Bowie and put on this cock, put on a dildo. She's like, I'm going to fuck your ass with this. And I'm going to fuck your pussy hole. And I was looking at it thinking, God, that's really small. Like, <laughs> I can take a lot more than that. <laughs> but you can't say that to this hot dominatrix. You got to be like, ooh, oh. Uh, this, this is... No, mistress, don't, don't, don't fuck me with that foreign still dog. <laughs> oh, oh, the women have played the same game for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't hurt me too bad with that. Right. So I did, I played the game. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And there was, I was, she put my mouth in another girl's pussy and whatever. So it was cool. It worked out well. <laughs> if, if but. <laughs> If any chick ever comes out with a hashtag me too about me, I'm just going to tweet a picture of my dick and go, how bad could it have been? <laughs> so, so, so that so got some laughs. You do, go ahead. Then I went to the serious part, where it's years later in Australia. Always great when a, a first time open micer has a serious part. I, I, no, no. Well, I, the touching episode. I heard from comics that when, you, when no one's when zone making any sound, it's like it's hard. You, you got to bomb. To have fun, you got to bomb a little. So I put in the part where everyone was like, oh, 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 God, oh. So in Australia, she came at me with a big black cock with another dom. Oh, She's like, oh, no, racist. you're getting it tonight. <laughs> well, it was, this is where no, you it was get black. racist. It was black. <laughs> okay, it was like prison black cock. It was, she, it was, it was, it's, it's the biggest cock I ever saw. Couldn't fit it in my mouth. He was like, oh, you're going to lube it up. I'm like, I can't fit it in my mouth. So then she gets and fucks me with it. And it's like, fuck. It was, fuck. This. She lubed. But anyway, it was terrible. Ah, well, terrible. you can't self-lube. No, she, yeah, Not I know. Not if you're a good racist. Yes, you can. Black yes, you can. If you do enough cocaine. Uh, shart. Shart. Yeah, yeah. Shart. <laughs> we got to start a brand of lube called Shart. <laughs> shart. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, she destroys my ass, and I'm fucking freaking out. Finally, it's out. And she comes back around. And she mind fucked me. She switched cocks. It was the same cock she fucked me with on the first night. Oh. She 
fucking mind fucked me. <laughs> and I'm like taking this little cock going, oh! <laughs> hey, thanks everyone for listening to the Jim Norton podcast. <laughs> we swapped guests accidentally. <laughs> so that was that was my my, my first routine. But I, it's uh, true. I had a I had a gal a, a, a previous a relationship try to jam a, a dildo in my mouth, but my fucking giant horse teeth like I could never give a blowjob. <laughs> no, no. It, well, it wasn't even the size of the fucking cock. It was the size of my teeth. I'm like this, <laughs> right? But you don't. But you know, you 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 don't. You can use your teeth if, if you're on a rubber cock. You know, you can't if you're sucking a real cock. From what I hear, <laughs> but you can fake it. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> but these fucking dominatrixes, they say no teeth. Like, like you can feel it. Like you don't even know. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm making everyone com. uncomfortable no, no. here. Hennigan, <laughs> Hennigan keeps disappearing and then showing up to make photos. They gave us a tour of kink.com, which kind of ruined me jerking off to kink.com because they have this full block. It was an old uh, 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 ar armory. Ar armory in San Francisco, and that's where they make all these, all the, I know a lot of people are into the two chicks wrestling in a wrestling Ring Wrestling's and the big, loser yeah. gets strap on fucked. Peed on. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Uh, uh, I can't name names, but uh, is that? Oh, that's kink.com. I go. Yeah, we just toured the factory, and they were the most miserable. Porn people are not fun. It's well, they're going out of business. That's that's what the problem is. That's well, why they're no, so they're still in business. It used they're to be just really not fun there. Money from it. No, that was yeah. the uh, podcast we listened to, the Butterfly Effect. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's that sad. Was, uh, John Ronson. But you could still trick girls into doing it. Going, you could be the next big porn star. Is, is, do you have a? Uh, you have your own apartment? <laughs> we'll come there and film. <laughs> Slave quarters there. No windows. Sucks. Uh, yeah, we knew uh, some a uh, uh, fan that was basically a janitor or something there, and he said, "Come down." So me and Bingo and Hannigan went, and we toured. It's awesome, right? Well, did they take you to the the rifle range at the bottom? They took us to Hennigan. They took us to basically what like a hoarder would have in their garage of all the shit they used to use. That does there was like real dolls that are missing limbs and shit. The base, <laughs> the that? basement of of misfit toys. <laughs> but everyone walking out of a room that's there's there's a whole shitload of rooms. This is like what four stories. Yeah. yeah. And they have a different set in every room. It took me years to get to the upper floor. <laughs> practice. I didn't have to do anything. Practice, practice, no. practice. <laughs> Met the right people. But everyone was miserable. I hosted the AVNs one year. Uh, oh, did you? It was all. I got I three. Sucked I got shit. three. Did you get three AVN awards? Yeah, for one movie. Okay. I beat Snoop Dogg. I beat this. Snoop Dogg. You... You, I didn't beat. I didn't beat been, him with anything. No, you've been in porn clips on Kink.com or yeah. other places. I mean, How many? I don't know, six. And I got paid. I made. They made this one guy give me ten ten dollar check. Oh, we. I, I wanted about to be this, a professional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a professional porn yeah, star. Yeah. Even though you know I didn't actually have sex. But what did you do? <laughs> What I, was your, I, I pulled my car your, out of a parking were, lot. Were you a character actor? No, I, I was a judge with a limp. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Rubber Bordello, I was a judge with a oh, limp that, was that the book, paid right? in $2 bills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I added the limp. Oh, so uh, you, improv. You weren't, like, you weren't naked. You weren't porning. Oh, you're, not porning. You're just... Uh, your wife was. No, I got like a five and a half inch or, you know, I'm not going to fucking porn against... Mm -hmm. these. And the fatter you get, the shorter it gets. I found you just some can't see it anymore. Naked pictures of me from when I was when I was dating Christine back. So I was like twenty eight or something. You were twenty eight. Like one hundred and forty pounds, and my dick was so much bigger. <laughs> I was sitting there in a bathtub with a boner, and I'm like, now you get all the the fat upper dick area, as Brendan Walsh <laughs> says. Brendan Walsh. Oh, that. I think there's. Is a, that on nine hundred two one zero? There is a ratio. <laughs> oh, no, that's Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Brandon. This is Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> there is a ratio for like how many inches you lose for every ten pounds or something. Well, you know what it is. I figured it out. I was a human sexuality minor in college. 
right? All it is is that your skin gets a little looser, so you lose a little feeling. That's why it's old people have a hard time getting a boner. It's got nothing else to do with no. I'm talking about the fat makes your dick smaller because when you get fat. Your dick doesn't go with the fat. It goes against the grain like a belly button. <laughs> Do you know something? Oh, you don't know this. No, I, I saw a demonstration. School. You know those dick pumps? Not, not, not you know the way, dick pumps? School me like those dick pumps. Yeah, uh, yeah his second album. Yeah. yeah, this guy I know, Danny, is a painter. He gave a demonstration on if you use one for like an hour and a half, it turns your your dick in like a coke can, like super fat, but the head stays the same size. Fucking weird. <laughs> Huge fat cock. Tiny little head. <laughs> I, I and then he fucks I, his girlfriend in front of everyone. And we're like, uh and she's just so bummed. <laughs> she didn't know she was part of the demonstration. <laughs> he didn't trick her and go, ah, oh, just kidding. It's my friend's dick. It's small and you believed it. <laughs> she's like, this again? Uh I, you, you, I don't make this shit up. <laughs> well, the, the, dick pumps can be really dangerous. Where it, it's kind of like what <laughs> they call the uh, thing with Viagra, where you get uh, prior priaprism. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, if an you extended have a bone boner. Last longer. I'm calling all my friends. If you pull too much blood into your dick, you. It's gonna turn into a fucking black eye, like you no, he told, your he vessels. Told, and, yeah, he told me that uh, he shouldn't have done it for so many years. <laughs> it's, it's a problem now. Now that I look back in life, <laughs> if I have any regret, it was that time we did too much ecstasy, and I go wait only another more hour and a half more. The, wait till you see the tiny yeah. head. It's worth the yeah, hour yeah. and a half. We're gonna do a forty <laughs> ounce. I'm gonna make him do a forty ounce this time. <laughs> Whole I'm English. Sorry, I keep chain smoking. Oh, you smoke? That's weird. Right, we still haven't gotten to the splitting up uh, the dildos. Like, when no, did I, you no, I did. Over? We split up. But you, you said you had to divide your marital aids the same way other couples no. fight over albums. That was that was easy. In, in L.A., we had three storage units full of stuff. Then it got weird. <laughs> okay, three storage units. Yes, we did. Full of. Yeah, well, we had a dungeon in L.A. and a dungeon up here. I have a walk-in closet full of <laughs> clothes for weirdos. The biggest black dildo <laughs> no, takes not- up a small amount of a storage unit. <laughs> How many sizes of dildos can there be? Like six, I think. And that's... Yeah, it's not... Uh, Are we talking like shelving unit and... Uh, hey, I'll be about, over in section B. Suspension you- things. We're talking about... Uh, Okay, no, yeah, suspension it was, okay. rigs, this fuck wasn't, slings, and fuck slings. Yeah. It just still trunks. Seems I have a like trunk. It would pack down really easy. I have a trunk that can fit These are set two up. people and and a bottle and a, and a thing of nitrous easily. All right, things of nitrous that <laughs> takes it's like a magician lot of space. props. Yeah. they're like take up space, Tanks. right? So how does how does the process come down to mine yours? Would well, you never really liked? The suspension swing and my new fucking Korean old man boyfriend. I, I didn't, she got the uh, got the gynecological chair from the sixties. You know. I, all right. I didn't want all that. right. Now you're talking storage space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gynecological yeah, they're, they're chair. They're huge. Barber shop with the stirrups in the Dent, wrong. There's area. the dental chair. All right. That's not comfortable. Once again, from the sixties. And, uh, Did she do your teeth at least? <laughs> hey, what? No. When she, she gave me tits before. Ass. She gave me tits before. Really? Yeah, she put uh, saline solution. Ay ay ay. Ay ay Yeah, you're you're hardcore. I just like no no. A it was awesome. It was in Jamaica. On. It hurt. Uh, it hurt uh, going in, but I, I got two hundred fifty cc's in each. Yeah, your breast, and I get to walk down the beach with her. <laughs> you, Could not stop touching my tits. Yeah, like you don't want you're, that. You're more. You're way more punk rock than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, duh, but. <laughs> 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 Just by my T-shirt, I'm more punk rock than you. <laughs> no, I've done, I've done a lot of, a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, and I lost shame and pride. What did like you two lose, years ago? What did you lose in the divorce in just those three storage <laughs> units that you missed the most? Ooh. Oh yeah, what did you haggle over? Yeah, like yeah. Like, like what was the the sling? We couldn't, on, we couldn't find the like... sling. I just describe got... the sling. <laughs> it's leather. It's just what a... gay men use mostly. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, what was that? Remember the early when when 
do you remember when all the weird the shit you can find on the internet now, like Lemon Party, we were just talking about. You always had one friend that had the VHS tape of that. There was a guy in one of those slings getting fisted, and then they pull a baby doll out of his ass. He he mocks childbirth, not mocks it, but mimics childbirth. And then he can't pull, mock that. Yeah. They pull a, a plastic doll out of his ass, and that was back in Captain Rowdy days. He had all these weird VHS tapes. That you had to know a guy. You actually you saw this coming up. out of this guy's ass. Was a, yeah. was a, and a he's in a sling going, dog. pretending to be giving birth to a, no, a baby. I, I, never, I never once in 20, 20 30 years went, wow. But, but you, <laughs> I'm just saying, do you remember the day when you could only find that shit from your weird friend who had VH te- VHS yeah. tapes of... What? Yeah, I, did, I didn't understand kind of like oh, what a boner was. My mom had Hustler magazine. She had a magazine called Cox and Cunts. Okay, and I looked at it, and it's just close-ups of cocks and cunts. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is disgusting. <laughs> and then I read a story that was kinky. It was a submissive man and a dominant wife, and I, this is a boner. Mm. I was like tw- 11 or 12, and wow. oh, All right, you I have a sexuality. Yeah. You started strong. What's, I it's my sexuality. off into weird shit. It's my sexuality. <laughs> You're a words guy, though. I mean, obviously, right? No, some people the, have the pictures with, didn't do it. It was the not, words. It was the story. It was the build up. Yeah, but there was no magazines that showed that. Well, yeah. we were that age. You were that age. And you know what? You couldn't. The only way you could get porn is to steal it. You know, or if your mother had first, a, a mirror above her bed and porn and a French boyfriend. First I mean, porn I watched was Bobby Shane uh, found his dad's porn on reel to reel eight millimeter Fuck, and oh had a yeah projector i saw reel to reel sh- stuff too. that was my first porn we all watched going oh we, i can't believe we're watching this and oh. then everyone had to go to the bathroom right away <laughs> after <laughs> you did no i didn't because i knew they knew i would be jerking off <laughs> But back then, you know, you're fucking. You actually 15. put together like that. You fed the eight millimeter reel through, and no, Bobby and Bubba Shane oh, did. All right, they were uh, older. On our bus once, no one in, in No Effects had seen cruising before, so we put it on, and uh, no, everyone was scared to go to the bathroom. Like I'm not going to the bathroom. Like I don't want people to think like I'm gonna off. Yeah. jerking off to this or something like that. <laughs> gotta gotta sit for the whole movie. <laughs> but you know, I can't I tell you the first. Millimeter eight at me about uh, video I watched because it was the son of someone who was uh, important. But he, are st- you gonna, he stole his dad. Me too, someone. <laughs> when, when the, when the uh, oh, me too. No, because he was just doing videos. It was just for... black and white porn videos because that's the only game in town. I'm not going to tell you who he was or the organization that he was president of. <laughs> that was nothing. You know, nothing. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. That's why I'll we you later. will never do this live because <laughs> someone always says something. They they wake up the next day going, "You gotta cut that out." You know what? You gotta. Kill I them. don't have shame or pride. Oh, I know. So it's okay. All right, let's uh, let's uh, take a quick break uh, to piss. We'll be back. All right, let me uh, stop to say, buy my goddamn book. Pre-order it now. It comes out December 5th of the year of our Lord, 2017. If you're listening to this late, it's still there at barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com if you don't want us to get credit going to it, towards that New York Times bestseller list that we're right on the precipice of, I'm sure. But we could be because I just get the hard copy now with the pictures and I didn't realize that I was foreshadowing oh so much shit that's there. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of uh yeah, me uh snacky. All right, uh we'll just let that lay. I'll tease this on Twitter. If you don't follow me at Doug Stanhope on Twitter, oh my god, the stories that I did tell. I have stories that Really? Who? How many accusers? I have actual pictures. It's like it's almost like a couple people fell on their sword to help you with your book sales. <laughs> <laughs> or pulled their sword out of their pants. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have so uh 
I've never been happier to promote a book in the tease to this. Get the book. That's the only way you're going to see the uh, picture of me uh, in, in motion of. And I can't believe that I pulled. I go, I can't have that many pictures of this type of situation. I already have a whole chapter. And then there's another <laughs> chapter where, like, if that guy came out and outed me as a me too. Yeah. Oh, my. It was a different day and age, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm an old man. Anyway, so for, oh, also, if you get it at Barnes & Noble or Amazon, that's great. But if you want a signed copy for a limited time, and there's a reason it's for a limited time, it's due to Chaley's patience of shitty email. Hey, can I get a signed copy? Yeah, if you go through my website. But we have to pay the same as you. It's not like we get free books. We work for the man, too. So we get the same price you pay on a wholesalers and then we have to buy it and then have it shipped to us. And then I have to sign the fucking things and then we have to pay to ship it to you. And you go, why is it so much more? No, this so you- last email was, Hey Doug, fire your marketing idiot. That was the start. So <laughs> <laughs> one job marketing idiot. And you can't do that. Right. Yeah. We pay the same. And then we have to actually, hire people to ship it and Denise and there's a whole shop and there's so yeah I don't mind signing the fucking thing for you but don't bitch about the charge because we're paying all the extra shit it's not like I'm charging you for sharpie ink you fucking cunts (laughs) you're just relentlessly cunts about everything I don't bring that out of you do I I try to make you in a nice all right (laughs) So, yeah, if you want it signed or just buy it uh, buy online it. and show up at a show. But I probably won't be playing the States for another uh, at least 16 months. That's, that's really why yeah. it's limited time. Yep. yep. So, yeah, if you, if you buy it from Singapore or Ho Chi Minh City or wherever I'm going next or Australia or the UK or Europe and the Scandinavian, maybe <clears throat> even fucking Cape Town. We don't know about Cape Town. Oh, really? Nah, we're talking about it. Might wind up there for good. Uh, yeah, if you if you buy that from those countries now, you might get it six months from now. <laughs> In time for me to sign it. And uh, Bingo's book, which is beating my book in the fucking Amazon sales ratings. Yeah, her book is available at her new website, bingobingaman.com. And uh, that also goes through us. But hers only goes through us. Yeah, uh, snatching all those profits. Yeah. Or, Fuck her, she's retarded. You she can also buy it on old... Amazon, but right now Bingo's signing them. Signing all the books. Oh, she's been yeah, yeah. signing them all day. Well, that's what I'm saying. You put you little buy three treasures Am- in books. <laughs> Look what I did, and I signed it like this. My signature is this uh, uh, indescribable, in, uh, indecipherable scrawl. Bingo's putting little cute notes and little <laughs> fucking stickers or some shit in there. Well, what else does she? That's have to on do? bingo. That's that's all her. That's that's how she feels during the day. Yeah, and that's, eventually yeah. we'll both have audio books out. But uh, as you know, if you read and listened to the first one, they're 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 a little different. They're they're both challenging. <laughs> all right, thank you. Let's get back to this podcast before I shit my pants. Anyway, so the band. You still do no effects, but you have your a, a side project, or or maybe now it's a. I I just do things. I do stuff, doing stuff. Not underrated. You know, not, you, uh, me first is the I'm, other band project that okay. Yeah, cover band. I'm trying to plug you, you fucking cunt. Don't don't plug me. Don't talk, don't talk to me about plugging. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll share this with you. <laughs> yeah, it moved. I'll it share moved. this it moved. with you. <laughs> The the new word that disturbs me so bad because everyone says it, it's remember uh, Erickson when he used to do radio like terrestrial can't swear but once people realized you could say douche and that wasn't oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone started saying douche and now the word is cuck 
and I learned the word cuckold. Are you from, a cu- are you a cuckold? No, like no, cuckold. I'm not. But I learned it from watching strap on movies when the internet was new, and I hate. You're a cuck. Say cuckold. Say the full fucking word. Because <laughs> cuck is just... You don't even know what it, you're saying, probably. You're just saying douche. You're saying cuck. Mm. And I... I used it in a new song because my ex-wife had a... She had a Jewish girlfriend. And she was staying with her. And I'm like, God, you know, you're staying with her more than me. So I wrote a song about him. <laughs> and they came over in the morning to our dungeon where I was by myself... And they said at the end of the bed, I go, hey, I wrote a song for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and her girlfriend, it was it was the worst thing I she's want, ever heard. I, I can imagine you doing your music unplugged on an acoustic guitar at That's the foot of a this bed. This pretty song in front of my wife and her girlfriend. I can't imagine you singing softly. <laughs> hey, I wrote a song for you. <laughs> You're so not I, punk. I, I, try, I, I I don't like music. I'll teach you. Very about open punk. about it. It, it. it embarrasses me. Yeah. Well, you and know I, when you, I had to learn all the lesbian tricks of you know, you know like like how many people know that you have to pull the hood up? You know, you pull the clitoral hood up when you're when you're doing that. Did you know that? No. No, I had to talk to the, the my girl my my wife's girlfriend. Like what what kind of tricks do you know that I don't know? And she hooked me up. Yeah, you. In my adult life, uh, you guys know about that, right? Chicks, girls here. You got to pull the hood up, right? And then when you're gonna come, guys, don't speed up. Keep it the same, the same meter, like a metronome. Yeah, I. I used to (laughs) see. See, I used to do a joke about boner pill spam and saying, "Is there a pill that's gonna make me care if she comes?" Because that's my worst problem as a lover. It's not really the boner as much as I don't care. I'm care. just going to get out of here as quickly as possible. That's what's good about having, For you. For you, good about having a slave girl. She wasn't my slave girl. She was my wife's slave girl. So if I came before her, which I got in trouble for, she was a finisher. She, she'd go, uh, boy, come over here. And boy would look at me Let's like, get deeper. thanks a lot. And she'd have to lick her. She'd have to lick her. Make her come, and I'm like, ha, ha, you're looking my come too. Let's get sucker. Let's get a little deeper. <laughs> I don't believe that any woman actually likes to be a dominatrix. Slave girl, I buy. They want, but I don't believe any chick is really into being a dominatrix. You know, what, That's why I'd rather just they, jerk off watching a good. The world's actress. not that black and white, uh, you know. <laughs> you, you, you do believe that some women like to be dominatrices. Yeah, but that's a troubled person. Like that, you know, I can't you argue with that. That was his have, you had, uh, have you been with prostitutes as an adult? I've, no, I've uh, never. Well, like as a like, no, a, I'm not. I mean, as I, an aware person. Okay, once uh, so my my wife, we were in Amsterdam, and she took us to a prostitute. It, oh, this is so rad! She goes, "Okay, I'm going to tie you up, and this girl's going to suck your cock," and. Uh, she, she put a condom on, and I, I never, I only use a condom like three times before because I don't sleep, a lot, sleep around a lot. And the girl's sucking my cock, and I'm just like, this is stupid. Fuck this. And she says, no, let me show you how to do it. And then she started sucking, and, and then she's like, fuck, I just shared the same condom with the girl anyway. So it made no sense. Was that the story <laughs> weird? You can edit that. But did you believe <laughs> that she really wanted to do that? No, it's for- different. The prostitutes, uh, well, some enjoy that. But dominatrix is different because they don't have sex, and yeah, they like the power they have over men. I mean, it's it's fun. I top sometimes. It's fun. It's fun to beat someone up, uh, not with your fists, in a oh, sexual I've manner. Had, I've had that girl. Yeah, you, uh, under your fist or no? That wanted you. me to beat them harder than it. It hurt my hand. Where uh, you I, can't do that. Because that's I had a girl Louis C.K. That, syndrome. That's, you know. I'm saving that for a, an essay I'm going to write. I know. Like what am I supposed else. to do? I went to a party that, once when there was a girl in the bathtub, and the sign said, is this a please piss on bathtub? her. I'm plugging no. your book. No. No effect. Please piss on, please piss on girl stories. in bathtub. You know, and that was, it was the party. Well, it wasn't the party, but that was the deal. And she loved it. But you get a picture of that, you know. 
in something, and suddenly you're part of the <laughs> the Kevin Spacey thing. <laughs> It's so terrifying, and you've been a drunk for as long as I I'm not have. terrified of it all, because I've never done anything close to taking advantage of a woman ever. But uh, uh, this is... I've had sex with two not... women in 30 years. All right. Okay, so I'm yeah, pissed you're, on a few. You're, you're, you're golden. <laughs> I said you're golden, Jinx. As you said, I pissed <laughs> I on someone. Up? I said you're golden. No. Uh, no. Golden it's... shower joke. Oh. Uh, hey <laughs> oh. But uh, <laughs> I, I, Life I, gives I, you I, lemons, you... Piss on someone. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, you're always, since this whole oh, thing started. Do you hear the rain? Yes. <laughs> good timing. Good timing, San Francisco. And we're in Chinatown, too, so it's yellow rain. <laughs> <laughs> yellow rain. You see, you muttered that. You go, I can't get away with what you can. Yeah, you, you I'm can, on your show. You can be, You'll get in trouble. You can, you, you can be a racist uh, as <laughs> long as you're talking about the yellow plague of Chineseism. <laughs> it's all it's all about intent anyway. It it is and it's uh I've been fortunate that I've built a fan base that even if they're stupid they they're not going to get angry. No one pays that much money to judge you. But if I was just a comic starting out trying any of this material, there'd be right. fucking blogs of plenty once I was the flavor of the month. No, it's because you're so smart. Over. You're so smart and your comedy's so good that you know exactly what you're doing. You have a nice Even package. You're drunk. I don't know. If we're going to just talk to each other dirty <laughs> like that, I can't, I can't take compliments. No, but I'm seriously, it's like you're, you're very impressive. Because you're so smart that even dumb people like you. What are you doing now that now that uh, <laughs> dumb people like it when you say cunt a lot of times? Yeah. He says cunt. Do the cunt thing where you say cunt. And dumb people like that. And then some people get when you have a point, And some people yeah. go, I just want to be drunk around another drunk guy. But when you said one of your albums I listen to when I'm uh, jogging, it says... <laughs> You said something about you're trying to save the world, change the world. By Everyone these. in the room is picturing you jogging. <laughs> <laughs> you have high leather uh, boots and uh, a leather fucking mini skirt. Uh, okay. And a fat man, mm, fucking black I was, t-shirt. I was walking fast. <laughs> <laughs> Moving my arms around a lot. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me, he said as he fled. <laughs> he said something about it. Thanks. I forgot my... Oh, I, uh, uh, you're trying to change the world. Listen to comedy. You're gonna say something that's so smart, people are gonna get it. And I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, I, you know, I write something that I think is so smart, and people will it'll change people's minds. But we played it. Texas. Uh, what with Trump won, and my daughters are crying, and and I was talking shit, and people were throwing bottles at my head, like, how could you like no effects and be a Trump supporter? That's impossible. I I have found that a lot lately. That's why I'm distancing myself. The whole libertarian thing, for a minute I was into, and it made kind of sense if you had any like belief in human decency, and then once you go, no, I don't, that'll never work. It's a good idealist theory, but now, like libertarians, a lot of fucking Twitter people, I look at their... Like, why are you giving me shit? And then I look at, they follow me, but they're all Trump, USA, MAGA. Well, those, they're not smart enough to understand what you're really saying. Well, that's because in the past, over the 20 years I've been putting out CDs, yeah, I've said nigger a lot. With a point, I've oh, said a that, lot of shit. Oh, that picture thing. <laughs> the you second. I'm not going to say it. I'm not yeah, going to say it. That's all right. With that the point is, Jamaican I can man's see cock. now, and this is where... You get troubled by the people who say, okay, you're leading to rape culture because your audience doesn't understand. And you go, I have to take some of that into consideration because now I have fucking... Why would a Trump supporter, not one, I've found several and I, I've i talked to someone about it where do I block them? And you go, no, I want them to keep coming and hopefully understand and I'll change... 
I'll say cunt in the right way where they listen to a point yeah. of oh, view. Oh, I love that joke, yeah. Well, when there was a march in San Francisco, they picked San Francisco to do a march. And me and Sturgeon, my friend Sturgeon from Left Over Crack, we were going to dress like one of them. And just two punk rock Jews marching with them. Who are you guys? Oh, you know, we're, we're just backing <laughs> yeah. you. And infiltrate. Absolutely. But then, you know. I've, I, I've, I've done you're an advocate of that. Bits about that. Yeah, dress like we them. We stayed up too late, though. Yeah. yeah. We didn't do it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I get. <laughs> we do that a lot too. Oh man, <laughs> we could change if the I world had if we were only awake. <laughs> it was a good idea. I think they marched before noon. You know, uh, <laughs> always too early. What are you doing now? I, uh, I don't know. We're North Beach. No, I mean, I'm just uh, uh, plugging upcoming anything. I, d I told you I don't want you to plug me anymore. No, you know what? I, he, I they want just, to. They just did a, a, a big festival. Oh, thing. we have a festival. Craft beer, craft beer festival. Punk and Drubic Festival. We just did six shows. I'm actually very proud of it. Yeah. Garlic Festival. That's like uh, Garlic. No, grapes garlic. wrath area. Mm. Garlic. Garlic. Gar garlic. Garlic. What'd you say? <laughs> craft beer. <laughs> craft beer. Punk, it's Where punk did I get garlic? Punk, punk and Drubic. Just saying. Oh, uh, we do a festival. Uh, six bands. That's where I got garlic. You don't want more that than that. That makes more sense. No kids allowed, over twenty one. Love it. Free beer from noon to four. Yeah, and and, and done at like nine thirty ten, so everyone go home. How fucked? How everyone fucked, go home. Yeah. How fucked are you? Divorce, especially seven years is a long time. No, I was married for eighteen years. That's the one that hurt. First one. Well, this is the fresh one. The fresh one. You're fifty years old. You just get out of a relationship. Are you going more? Somber, or are you going? My friends think I'm gonna die. Are you going crazy? You know what? Me? My friends do think I'm gonna die, <laughs> but I don't. I'm Again, just, that's I'm, why I'm, we're I'm, here I'm, together. I'm more. Uh, yeah, I mean, friends call you and say, "I'm really worried about you." Go, worry about yourself. I'm doing just fine. But I'm saying, are you going crazier? I'm out of a relationship. I'm free and <clears throat> footloose and fancy yeah. free. But my kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going crazy. Okay. You're Baz, not, you're how, many, how many how many how many dominatrixes are at, at the house him. at the at the same time? Yeah, N never more than four. Do they take credit cards? Five. Five. Yeah, yeah. I got I got this French guy. We we're, we're writing music together. He cooks for the doms. Wow, yeah. he's a uh, real all self. the doms are have college <laughs> degrees. One of them has a master's. Oh, fuck my ass, but I'm not making breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? He made me for breakfast. Fresh Whatever bitch chanterelles and eggs. No, what? What? He made what? Mushrooms and eggs. Yeah, chanterelles. It's so it's, it's, it's a fancy mushroom you've never heard of from he doesn't Arizona. Like, I hate he doesn't like eating mushrooms. No. No. Oh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> my favorite drug, and I hate it, which is probably why I'm still alive. Mushrooms? <laughs> I don't like those hallucinogens. I don't, really? No. Oh. Ecstasy? Boy, that's not a hallucinogen. Oh, no, but I'm, I'm going Fuck through yeah. the drugs. Okay. I tried give, ecstasy at 34. Give, give the, loved it. Give me the list of drugs, and then we'll get to the new drugs second. Heroin, have you done it? No. Never. Never tried it. heroin. Never tried it. Wait till we're Meth, really never tried it. stage. Meth? Yeah, I did it back when it was called Crystal and you snorted it. No. Uh, but it's terrible. Uh, you, you coke, think, I know you... I tried, like coke, coke. I tried Coke at 32. Okay, but I enjoy it medicinally. I'm not, no, it's... You don't it, have to you know what coke is? Coke. Coke, is, do a line and coke, isn't coke isn't great. Coke isn't great. It's just better than not doing it. <laughs> 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 right? Because you're not like... Woo! You're just like... All right. Yeah. That's why I can do one line of their Coke. And, they have uh, Coke? Uh, no, oh, not tonight. This isn't this TV. Is you can two. put it out right here. We can pretend. Yeah, night one, there's Coke. But uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, like a, a one bump, two bump guy just to get me through having to talk to people. Well, Ralphie May used stage. to say it was uh, St Dougie Stanhope does it so he could drink more. I mean, that was, yeah. Yeah, Pretty it's, much. it's equalizer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, balances shit out. You can have a good set. You can Yeah, I saw Pat Patton Oswalt here once, and he drank so much. Who? Patton Oswalt, heard of him? Yeah. Child-friendly humor. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Patton's yes, great. he does. 
He has child-friendly humor. I played guy, my daughter. I was about to say something. Like, I can't, you know. There's another guy. I can't play your stuff for people under 30. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, <laughs> but but I played some some at Patton Oswald for you know. Patton's great, uh, and he's one of those guys because he drinks. I, I he was one when the alternative scene in L.A. was gelling. He was one of the only guys that was nice to me, and most of the other ones, maybe my own paranoia, mostly stoners, and stoners and drunks generally. Don't get along. So comedians are paranoid about the stoners because they're laughing to themselves and they, you think it's about you. <laughs> so were you not accepted in the comedian scene real fast or are you still not? I don't know. Mm. But I've, I've, I've separated myself and I hope they like you me. Are. You're, I find out they do like that's me. That's why we're I, hanging I out. Go, wow. Yeah, I know. No, punk rock's not like that. Punk rock is very supportive. But it, this wasn't a, no, a not supportive. It's a the after party it wasn't about the act. It was stoners and high people are fucking bored. Yeah, Do you watch I hate intervention? It. I hate people who write songs when they're stoned. They think everything sounds good. It's moronic. <laughs> like, you know, the deadhead said when he got out of rehab, what is this shit I've been listening to? <laughs> because... Uh, all right, I'll give you uh, my uh, book joke. Uh, what was the? <laughs> Did I say that? Uh, no, no, no. It's a uh, uh, difference between a, a dead head and a light bulb. Uh, light bulb, or how many dead heads does it take to change a light bulb? They just watch it burn out and follow it around for thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear Not my joke? My my Jerry, my Jerry oh, Garcia joke. Do Not it. joke. Do it. This is punk. Uh, he died. We had a show that night. We played at a bar in San Francisco. San Francisco is uh, obviously for yeah, the and, and made all this fun. I wrote a song. It went out on our, on our album called "August 8th Is a Beautiful Day." All the hippies are crying. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the album comes out, and the guy at the record label goes, "Mike, uh, is this song about Jerry Garcia?" Well, yeah, obviously. Do you know he died on August 9th? Not not the eighth. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote a whole fucking song. <laughs> Seriously, look at on Heavy Petting Zoo. Wrong date before the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wrong date. Just never checked. The title, the title of my album the, from across the street was gonna be "I Ain't Never Won Nothing in My Life," but I forgot to do the bit that was the title track. <laughs> that works though. No, oh, I, I finally put the bit in. That's Three cool to put a bit on a, on a later record because yeah, people the, think uh, you were thinking that. Based eugenics bit, yeah. I forgot to do it because I only d taped one show. Oops. <laughs> so you're uh, so you're on a bender. Yeah, this is my last night partying. What do you do next? I have eight or nine days off. You're gonna do uh, some kind of personal rehab. What's no, your? I, rehab? I do that all the time after tours. I take How do you like do ten days rehab? off. What's I went, your, went to your... detox once. Six, I'm have six to days. Do that. I can't no problem. Now I'll die. I'll have to do like a tapering off. Right, well, I, but Doug, why don't but, you explain the uh, the rehab we did before the thirty days I, in the I, hole? I, yeah, uh, three years ago, roughly. Yeah, I did thirty days where I quit smoking, which is my. That's the one I have to quit. You made it thirty days. Yeah, I did, but I just I just stayed in a, a little travel trailer, old vintage travel trailer, and I drank. Three drinks a day, because I'm at a point where I drink so much. If I stopped, you'll you'll probably seizure up yeah, and sad. have a stroke. So, so just two, three drinks a night, no smoking, and then we would podcast if only ten minutes a night. every day for thirty days. Well, that's good. But now it's getting worse. I, I was depressed for a little while. I have a musical that's going to open on Broadway pretty soon, and we got pushed back because of Frozen. <laughs> that hurts. No, a, it hurts. That's a Disney movie. That's a Disney animation like, movie. Everyone's like, okay, like. we're opening this year. It's opening. It's called Home Street Home. <laughs> Everything's going forward. Our producer yeah. says, Frozen's, uh, yeah. we, we won't beat Frozen for best musical. And I, I, I freaked out. And then I got divorced that same week. 
and yeah, and I, did open mic and had a Broadway <laughs> musical, but you have nothing to plug. No, but John, You're just a guy John in a Cameron Mitchell. Story. I have nothing to talk about. And uh, eight eight show festival of craft beers and no, I slip it in, dude. It's Come great. On. But John Cameron Mitchell, who wrote Hedwig, is my mentor. I was talking to him, and he was like, Mike, quit being a little bitch, so you got pushed back a little bit. You're still... And then he said, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let Fuck! It go. And then... <laughs> That's the title track. From Frozen. You know, if you had kids, you'd understand. When you're in a room full of Hollywood entertainment types, is it cooler to name drop someone that nobody knows? I think it is. Let me, you let just me, let me call drops. Quentin Tarantino and I'll, and I'll, I'll let go, you know. Oh, that's way cooler than my name drops. <laughs> yeah. my John Cameron Mitchell is, is awesome. He put his balls on my forehead when, when he was doing Hedwig. You know the car wash little bit he does? Yeah, he didn't do a car wash. He just, boop, balls on the forehead. <laughs> What's your, uh, so your, your rehab, we'll, we'll, we'll race towards an end here. Okay. Well, what do you do when you're going to get healthy? Uh, I, why, well, I, I ride my, all, I ride my bike almost, let, I ride my bike like six to ten miles a day, and, uh. You make your houseboy put the, uh, cocaine and he chops up no, multivitamins. No, 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 it's not, if, uh, I, I, it's, 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 in a it's pretty easy. Oh, no, it's, if you, it's a one a day. God if you exercise, it, you it gives you the stuff you need. It oh, gives you. You talk about that in your book, too. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I need to exercise, play golf, write songs. Tough part is like between eight and twelve at night, right? That's when you're like uh, staring at the ceiling. So you go to the movies. Well, yeah, they don't make them anymore. They make like two good movies a year. You don't go to movies? No, come I watch on. Netflix. You see the Billie Jean King movie? It was awesome. Oh, is it out? I wait till they come on a hotel. That's sad. Go to a movie. <laughs> go to a movie theater. It's two hours of great. I mean, even La La Land. It's awesome. Yeah, you see a, a movie. You're in a theater, but you can't smoke. Unless you're Johnny Depp. You can do whatever you want. Johnny Depp can smoke. There's no rules against smoking if you're Johnny Depp. No Is that smoking. true? No. We also I, live in an I, area I, where I, it's I 30 minutes. Kind of oh, you don't have theaters in I was in drunk Bisbee. on the 30, plane coming 30 here, and I wrote that as a note that I thought was a funny joke, and it wasn't. I'm coming to Bisbee. You ever been to Hawaii, Doug? I have been to Hawaii. The One of my favorite uh, day drinking bars is Arnold's Tiki Bar in Honolulu. Hard to find. It's above a, a behind an eggs and I or some shit. Eggs and things. Eggs and things. Uh, no, the, that place is like eggs and things. The Hideaway. I used to go to the Hideaway. Hernando's. Well, where where the dog, the bounty hunter, was scared to go in. <laughs> is that? Is oh, it you want to hear a story? Yes. Okay, I got one one last story. This is one of no, my on. best stories. I we go to this place, ten hour podcast called the Hideaway, and there was Fletcher from Pennywise and Timmy the Turtle, and someone else. And I got to take a shit, and this is the craziest, worst bar. It's not on the street; it's in an alley. It's it, yeah. It's been it's in an alley, sketchiest bar ever. And this is Honolulu, Honolulu on yeah, Waikiki. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm just gonna like, just push as hard as I can and get out of here. And I got you know I got some hemorrhoids, whatever. And I was I guess I was tilted a little, that happens. and I just pushed really hard, and I didn't hear anything. Is your asshole so fucked no. out you have to have <laughs> audible signals to know when you shit? No. Well, you, you, you hear the water. You hear if it's loose sure. or whatever. But no, nothing. What I did is I hit the seat. Oh. And it bounced onto the wall. Got this it. is how he learned like, how to use it today. Like day. Spin art. <laughs> so I just shit on the wall. Sure. Like a of, shotgun of, blast. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but I did get it all out at once. So then I wiped and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I can't tell anyone. Like, I uh, shit on the wall. <laughs> so, so I just, I just, I, I wiped. I'm like, I'm out clean. I got out. No one noticed. Yes. And, you know, tragedy plus time. <laughs> so, like, three minutes later, I told Fletcher. I just shit, I just, I shit plus on the time. Three minutes. <laughs> I shit on the, I just shit on the wall. You got to check it out. And he went in. <laughs> I mean, I just made some art. <laughs> Tragedy plus time <laughs> equals braggart. So he went and took a picture. He took a picture of it. Sure. And then and he comes out, and then some guy goes in there, and then fucking Fletcher from Pennywise shit on the fucking wall. <laughs> yes! Winner! 
and he's you know he he just around his friends so <laughs> so we just we laughed and <laughs> you guys are so fucking alike Doug I know because that Let's friendly just, that friendly <laughs> story is we're just gonna like kill that. the fucking podcast yeah. on that because it ain't getting better. <laughs> <laughs> What are we at? I told you it's a good story. We're fine. Story. We're good. Yeah, what, hour 10? Yeah. 50 no, seconds? No, no, you're right. That's a good ending. Yeah, I know. Let's go do some blow somewhere. No shit. <laughs> some really <laughs> terrible blow. Oh, I, 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 it's in my pocket. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was coming to the fucking Stanhope show. I, I, I'm going to drink down the Adderall that got me through uh, this. I, I do want to say uh, thank you to uh, Cobb's Comedy Club. Hosting thank you Doug for here having us. Nights, and letting us stay... As late, I think we locked up last night. <laughs> and there's was, no one down there right now. When it, 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 and the, the, the material is not worked out, but I thought if I write the thing I want to write about this whole new hashtag Me Too. That last bit you did tonight, yeah. This would be the club that would be the first to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you killed and, it with that. Uh, fortunately, you, my audience, stayed in form. <laughs> And you're drunk, and you drink, and you sell lots of fucking glasses of liquor, and you tip well. As much of you dick bags as you might be for being too drunk, you make up for it. So thank you. I don't have to censor myself. And uh, uh, you never have to. You made a really, not, really good point, though. Well, yeah, I'll just. Oh, I just ruined that. We'll, we'll make no, no. out as soon as we just say good night. Two things. We have a, Karen, thank you for the flowers. I want, a, I want a plug, please. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'll do this, and it. you guys, he, you guys. That's can his job. He's doing it. Uh, Karen, thank you for the flowers. Josh, thank you for the lab mic for Tracy. Once we get back to the funhouse, we will set that up. And I really appreciate those people coming out. They were awesome. Brett Erickson, Morgan Murphy, drinks for all my friends. Mad caddies are here. <laughs> Sam, thanks Thomas. for having me. Brian, it's, for a, it's an honor to be here, Dave. Earlier, <laughs> it's an honor. I'm, this is so awesome. That's great. I, it's, the guys who keep lighting my cigarettes. Anyway, thank you. Mike and I are going to go fall in love for the first time all over again. <laughs> great. No, yeah, plugs. Do you want plugs? I, I'm going to go home and get plugs. some plugs. plugs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to get plugs. You should have a yard no, sale. This, this is this. <laughs> all right. This podcast was. Uh, all right, this podcast was uh, night two at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. Second to last night before the end of my tour in D.C., Fat Mike, who I didn't... I honestly forgot about Fat Mike because so many people showed up at that gig that by the time... Fat Mike was the only guy I, I was looking forward to seeing in San Francisco, but every fucking person in the world showed up to the point where when I walked in, I had no idea it was him. Here, here's a guy in a fucking uh, full leather uh, kilt, <laughs> black kilt and spangles and fucking... <laughs> he's got chaley hair and he's like, hey! And he's like... And I, I, I was confused, and he goes, Fat Mike. I went, oh, fuck. So confused with the other people. You hugged him. I know. And, 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 and went back, and I'm all, Fat Mike. <laughs> and you went, oh, hey. <laughs> You'd already given him, like, a welcome to the green room, getting ready to, to go on the show or, and, and everything well, like that. fucking Sam. I, I understand. Fucking Sasquatch. Sam Sasquatch shows up. And he had already said he's coming with his drummer friend from a band. Yeah. So I assume this <laughs> fucking weird guy in a mohawk and a leather kilt that's 50 years old is the drummer friend. So I just hugged him because he's a friend of a friend. <laughs>